Hey guys, how's it going? Mars Bucks here. Welcome to another episode of Bradford City Career Mode. It's been so long since a Bradford City Career Mode, and I'm sure you all know the reason why. I've been moaning about it for two weeks now. It's been that long since an episode. But yes, my PC's been fucked. I've got it back. Uh, book it. I'm just back up. I'm running. I've got everything sorted again. And yes, we can finally get back underway with Bradford City. But guys, before we do advance on through, I'm sure for a few eagle eyes out there, or for those of you that remember, we are a few couple of months, maybe just about a month and a half forward in the career mode compared to our last episode. That is because guys, one thing, just one of the many things that was wrong with my PC was that my hard drive must have been magnetized or something, but it's just completely disintegrated and I have lost a, a fair bit of vision off there. I've even lost two amazing goals that I scored in the same game with the same player against Chelsea, that player being Doyle. So if you guys are wondering, I'm in a bit of a love affair with Doyle right now. So basically, I've lost that vision, which is I'm devastated about, but I've at least been able to get the green screen vision. So, I mean, I won't be able to show them to you, but I mean, to provoke this sort of reaction, this is what we're talking about. Pass it again, and a shot, great! Oh, what a goal! What a fantastic goal to start off on Legendary! Oh, there's space for a cross. That goes in, that might go in! Oh, Doyle! He's done it again! Yeah, that was some pretty good fucking goals. But anyway, before we advance on through, I need to clear a few things up and go through a few things with you because, of course, we have lost vision since episode 9, or at the end of episode 9, we're about halfway through December. We're now nearly halfway through January, so I just need to wrap up a few things. Majority of that stuff is transfer-related, so yeah. I'm just going to try to get through it as quickly as possible. The first transfer business we'll go through is Adam Jerukso. I received an offer from Montpellier uh, and a, few, a lot of other clubs for a ridiculous amount of cash that they were willing to pay for Jerukso. He is, of course, leading the J-Bucks medal count right now. And I was very hesitant to try to sell him. But at the same time, if you're doing a Road to Glory career mode and you want to get as many good, young, potential, high potential players as possible, sometimes it means sacrificing your better players to bring in a shitload of cash and then get, you know, the same type of quality play with the same amount of potential, like, but not just one. You can get, like, four of them. So we are waiting to hear back from Montpellier with an offer on Adam Jerukso because they said that they wanted to pay, like, five million for him. I counter-offered for eight million, and if they accept eight million, then that's it. Jerukso's gone. We have so much cash, and we can spend a shitload of money on players. One of the players that we're in talks with right now to get on a pre-contract is Macaulay Christiantis, and he is uh, he's a very, he's a very nice-looking player, and again, he's just a player that came up when I was using my scouts. I sent them away and searched because all the players that I'm looking at getting this uh, career mode are not going to be like, I'm just going to go on a so FIFA or something like that and see who's the best. It's whoever I just know off the top of my head might be good or if, you know, uh, a player will pop up through one of my scout searches. So I want to keep it as a realistic, down-to-earth career mode as possible. We have made three successful signings already and these are all players that we're getting on pre-contracts so we'll get them at the start of next season. Danny Ward is one of them. He is a left winger who has got some fantastic sets on him. And he's not just a left midfielder. He can play a numerous positions. He's almost a complete midfielder. Center forward, center attacking midfielders as well. Both wings. He looks solid as well. High attacking wear rate, 23 years of age. He's got some terrific stats. He's looking like he's going to be fantastic. Matthew Spirinovic is an Australian from Western Sydney Wanderers, who we have also got on a pre-contract. He's 25 years of age, but he is still a very nice centre-back, who is meant to be a pretty decent rating at the moment. And because he plays in the A-League, we got him on a pre-contract, so we only paid his wages, for ridiculously cheap. He's meant to be like 70 or near 70 rated, and he's got a decent-ish potential, and, he, and we only had to pay like $2,000 on a wage for him, as compared to players that we would have to pick up in the Premier League, that would be like 10,000. It was insane. And the same goes for this man, Aaron Moy, who has some amazing stats already. He's meant to be around the 70 mark as well, with an 80 plus potential, and he is solid. Another Australian from the A-League, and yes, that means we also picked up a near 70 rated player with a decent potential for only like 2,000 wage. It's unbelievable how cheap some of the players in the A-League are. As for players that I'm trying to sell, Alejandro Morozo is one free agent that we got at the start of the season who has been very poor, hasn't grown, hasn't done much, and he hasn't really impressed me. And, you know, he's just worth a fair bit of cash that we could bring in, and that's money that we can use to spend on more players. And that's something that I definitely would like. So I'm going to sell Morozo if possible, in this transfer window, and we're still waiting to hear back from that offer on Jerukso. And here is my shortlist. Now, guys, these are a mix of players that I'm trying to get on a pre-contract and players that I would sign right now if this Jerukso offer goes through. So uh, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to go through the pre-contract players first, and then we'll go through players that I'm trying to sign right now 
if the Adam Jarugso sale goes through. Marco Silvestri looks like a pretty good goalkeeper with a nice potential, but he's 22 years of age, so hopefully he turns 23 in January, and if that happens, we can get him on a pre-contract. Briggs is another one, same deal. Left back, 22 years of age. Hopefully he turns 23. We've got Jack Colback and Dan Gosling who all look fantastic centre midfielders, but the only problem is they go for like 30,000 wage, whereas compared to Aaron Moy, who's meant to be a little, not as good as Dan Gosling and Jack Colback, but still pretty good with a nice potential. We got him for so much cheaper. Their wages are 30,000, his was 2,000. It was incredible. We've also got Aquino, who we've gotten before, but again, his wages will be too much. Danny Pacheco is a player that I would really like to get because he's got not too expensive a wage, but he looks solid as well. I'd love to get him. I've been meaning to get Danny Pacheco in a career mode for a few FIFA titles now, so that'd be awesome. Dama Traore is another player, 22 years of age. Hopefully he turns 23 in time as well. We've also got Andre, who might be a little bit too much. And Macaulay Christiantis, we're trying to get as well. We're in talks with him right now. We're just waiting to hear back from him. And now for the players that if I sell Jerukso, if I have enough wage, I'm going to try to buy him. One of them is Matthew Ryan, who is an Australian goalkeeper. And he, of course, again, I actually just gone in and searched for him because... We all, I, at least being an Australian, I know how big a potential this guy has. He's meant to be pretty decent right now, around that 70 mark as well. So I would love to try to get him. I'm currently scouting him and a few of the other players. So maybe we can get a wage in time before the transfer deadline day, but that seems unlikely. But either way, Ryan's a goalkeeper that I would like to get. And Paolo Gass uh, Gazzaniga, I hope that's right, Gazzaniga, uh, is another goalkeeper that I think should be good. Of course, uh, backup goalkeeper from Southampton, who we have seen in the Premier League. And he would probably have a pretty high wage. But then again, if we're not getting him on a pre-contract, it doesn't matter too much. So they were the two goalkeepers that I was interested in getting. And these are two strikers that I might be interested in getting in replacing Jerusso. One of them is a, is a man that we have seen before in the J-Bucks Road to Glory career mode. That is Yassine Benzia. We've already got stats on him because he is a loaned player at the moment for Lyon. And of course, being 19 years of age and having some fantastic stats already, he's around that high 60 mark, not necessarily pushing 70. But we know he's got a good potential. And you know, I know I've got him before. But I would love to get him again if possible. And the other striker that we'd be chasing as well is one that a few Australians watching this would probably understand. Adam Taggart, I believe, is actually the was the leading... I think he was the Golden Boot winner for this A-League season. He's only 20 years of age. He's got some very good potential on him and some nice stats. And uh, he's another striker that I would love to try to get if Jerusso sells and we can replace with him. Hell, maybe we can even try to get the both of them. Ah, <sighs> but that took a very long time to get through, but we're done. And now we're advancing on through to a game against Watford in the FA Cup. We're gonna wait, we're gonna hear back from a few players. We've got Macaulay Christiantis declining because he pretty much wants to get paid more cash because he's okay living where he is. So that means we're gonna have to pay more money for him. Uh, press conference as well, that's all right, doesn't matter. We also got another email. Montpellier have accepted the $8.5 million counter offer for Adam Jerukso, this is a player that's value is only two million. We're selling him for eight point five million. We're going to bring in like seven million worth of cash after you know that money that has to go to the board goes to the board. So we're going to have nearly seven million dollars worth of cash to splash out in this transfer market, and you know this is where we set up our run to the Barclays Premier League. This is where we buy the players that we need, we invest in the future, but for now, I'm just gonna advance on through to the Watford game. We're gonna wait for the sale to go through. Another offer for transfer for Adam Jerukso. I really don't know if there's a point. Lazio wanna get him, Hamburg SV wanna get him. I'll just keep countering, I'll just counter offer. I think it, there's pretty much no point, but I mean, you never know, the Montpellier deal could just not go through at the very last minute, so I'm just going to keep counter-offering. I do actually feel a little bit bad about selling Adam Jerusso because he's just been a star for me. 71 rated, sensational player. We've gotten on a pre, we got a uh, from free agency. He's just been fantastic. I know he's got a good potential on him, but you know sometimes it's like I said before, you've got to sacrifice one of your best players to bring in a player that will be just as good in the future and you know you'll be able to bring in like four of them so here we go fa cup against watford round three and guys one thing that you might notice i did uh before you know we lost that vision is that i finally bumped up the difficulty of this career mode to legendary so it is now the hardest it can possibly get for me so let's go and here we go about to kick off with round three of the fa cup and guys this could very well be adam jerusso's last game for bradford city so it'll be sad to see him go if he does go but at the same time his sale, his transfer just opens up so many doors for this career mode. Will he score in what will probably be his last game? Only time will tell, but let's get this game underway. We get it back. Oh my God. Now run down the guts. Run, Hanson. 
Go, Hansen. Oh, he's not going to get there in time. He's too slow. Going to switch up the play here. I see Morozo, who has not been great either. We might tell him as well. But, oh, he makes a good run there. Oh, it's a great... No, is he offside? No, it's a foul. 38 yards out here. I'm not going to try anything stupid, or will I? I don't know. I might lay something off. I don't normally do this. No, I'm not. I'm going to run forward and take a shot. It's blocked. That is some ball. That really is some ball. Oh, my God. He went around my man like it was nothing. And that's the goal. Okay, they're 1-0 up already. Shit. Okay. Um, damn. All right. I When I went in for that sliding tackle, I expected Meredith to just go around with his left foot, but he stuck out his right foot. Here, watch this. See, what? Mm, I wanted him to swing around, but at the same time, he did move away, so I don't think that was ever going to work, but... All right. Eh, down. All right, now we need to get a goal. This could work. This could work. Bit of separation. Jerusa goes through. Oh, that burst of pace, mate. Bang! Oh, he saved it. No! Damn, it was... Okay, worked himself in a too tight an angle. Could have finished it, but didn't do it. I see the far wing, but he doesn't want to run. Now he's going to run. There we go. That's a nice little delivery. In a Morozo. The fake shot. Oh, it's heavy as hell, hell. But guess who's run onto it? It's Bennett. It's blocked. Fuck. Will he whip in across? He's got so many guys behind him. He's going to have to work it. Play it smart. Whipping across. It gets in. It gets in. It gets in. Oh, it's plucked by Almunia. Jeruks on the ball. Passing it around. They've fucking dropped everyone back, haven't they? This is ridiculous. Another ball. Another lob through ball. Decent enough delivery. Need a good cross. That's a Perla. Oh, what great ball movement. And Jeruks scores. Thank you. Now I feel bad about... Now I feel bad about selling you. He just gets the job done. All right, making some substitutions. Reach and Atkinson come on. So hopefully some fresh legs. Might be able to get us a winning goal here. Jeruxo is going through. He's got a burst of pace and a gap. And there he is. And he's got some support. He'll whip in that cross. Deflected and taken by Almunia. And that is the end of the game. We couldn't get that winning goal. We were able to we were able to get the goal back after conceding. But I think this means we're going to a replay. So that's another game that we have to play in an already absolutely crowded fixture with a bunch of games being played like once every two or three days. Either way, this is the player ratings for FIFA 14. Man of the match was Adam Jeruxo with an 8.5 rating, but I'm going to give out the votes now. I'm going to give one vote. I reckon it's going to go to Meredith, who played quite well. I'm going to give two votes to Jeruxo, FIFA 14's man of the match, and three votes are going to go to Kyle Bennett, who had a very nice game and was just popping up everywhere and did a bunch of good stuff. So it ended in a draw. I'm going to advance on through. We've got a game against Chelsea in the Capital One Cup semi-finals. We've got two games of them against them, that means. They, they will be the biggest games that we've played so far against Chelsea. Wow. But... Uh, yeah, that'll be a test. But either way, we're going to advance on through. And we're going to wait to hear back from Jeruxo. Has the transfer gone through or not? Player sold. We just got $7 million for the sale of Adam Jeruxo. It's more than three times what he's worth. But at the same time, we've lost arguably our best striker. But you know what that means? It's time to go get another one and then some. First thing I'm going to do, I've been chasing McCrawley Christiantis from the start of this episode. So he said no to this 10,020%. So what I'm going to do is bump it up to, I'm going to say, not 20, no, 2,000, no, 12,500. Still keeping the 20%. I'll match the four year thing as well. And hopefully he'll accept that. If not, I might chuck the crucial on him, uh, the crucial squad roll. If he still says no to that, then maybe 15,000, I'll just have to make a decision. But one player that actually was 22 years of age before we went into January, but then turned 23 in January, is Danny Pacheco. And now that we've got a bunch of cash now, I want to get him on a pre-contract. So yes, please, let's go sign him. Four years, 20,000. I'm going to chuck on the 20%. I'm going to chuck on the 20% for every single transfer from now on, because if it boosts my chances of getting him, then I'm going to do it, especially if the 20% means nothing. It, it just, it means nothing. And as for Yassine Benzia and Adam Taggart, as well as the goalkeepers, Ryan and Gazinga, and of course, I'm still waiting to see if Silvestri turns 23. Um, I'm going to hold off on those guys because I am scouting them. I am hopefully going to get some stats and hopefully even a value just in time before the January transfer window ends. But that seems unlikely. But either way, I'm going to leave it till the end before we start signing those players. Macaulay Krishantis has accepted the offer, $12,500 on wage and a 20% bonus for four years. Okay, that's another player that we have picked up and we'll be getting at the end of this season. But now we've got a game against Chelsea, the first leg of a semi-final in the FA Cup. I, It's going to be at home as well. And there it is. After the first leg at Southampton and Manchester City, Manchester City was one up. So we'll assume that they beat Southampton in the next leg. You never know. 
But if we can somehow find a way and defeat Chelsea on Legendary with Bradford City, then we will be in the final and we will be playing either Man City or Southampton. But this is going to be tough. I mean, you look at some of their names. Eto, Oscar, I don't know. Are they going to pass anybody else? Hazard's in this game. They're not going easy on us. They're rocking pretty much a full-strength team. Oh, my God, and they're going to start it easy. Oh, look at Willian. He just goes and shoots. And please clear that. Thank you. Oh, my God, that's a brilliant bloody cross. And another one. Please clear... How did it get all the way out to Willian, and how was no one back there and tagging him? We fucking conceded already, within four minutes. I want to know how this happened. I brought my guy forward, no one's at the back. Who's marking him? Meredith. Oh my god, splitting me open, and he stops it. Yes, well done, Jamison. You are fucking kidding me! My guys, everyone's running into each other, just defending poorly. Can we just get... Oh, we're just... We're having such a poor shit game against the worst opponent possible. Good passing. Please, come at me. Just keep on running. Doyle, run hard. Keep on going. Being chased by bloody fucking Ivanovic. Pass quick. Not to the player that I want to. We just need to be more clinical and cleaner with our play. This is the worst type of opponent that we can be playing shit against. One minute of stoppage time. I don't think there's enough in this for a counter-attack. Referee calls it off. Oh, man. Okay, so the goal that we conceded was... The ball just got out over the back from a cross, which is disappointing in itself that we couldn't deal with that. But nobody was nobody was tagging Willian. That's Meredith's job. He's a left back, and he just let him... The ball got out over the back, and within five minutes, we conceded. And after that, we've had some chances that have just been blown by just poor play. And it's... Oh, it's so frustrating. That's a ball. That's some ball. Tuck of the shirt, please. Foul. Yes. In a decent and dangerous position. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try laying it off. Hopefully this works. There's space for it. Come on, reach. Oh, speaking of reach, check reaches that one. I need a good free kick taker. That's why I'm really interested in getting Benzia because he's got great free kick accuracy and curve. Not an awful lot of power, but that's actually a good thing when it comes to free kicks. Means he can get it up and down and get a lot of dip on it. And this is some good ball movement. Another foul. Keep going wide. Meredith, please, you got to deal with this. Nice one. Well dealt with. Well dealt with. Bullshit that went out. Fucking give me something. Please. Anything. Nice little tackle, please. And the through ball. Send him away. Nice. It's a, it's a three on two. But we're moving the ball so poorly right now that it just turns into like a five on two. But that's a great header. Keep on running, Hanson. Oh, we've found the pass. Oh, ho, ho. What a goal! Tight angle! We picked up a goal against Chelsea at home! Oh my god! Is that Reed? He's done it! It was oh, it was a reverse sweaty pass. I made the angle even tighter for myself. But Czech ran out. Hansen ran forward. Left the space. I was thinking about chipping it. I just went for the power. Oh my god! He's put it away. He's put it away. He had Cole in front of him. And he just got it past his foot. And just snuck it home. We've scored against Chelsea, and how late have we left it? This stoppage time, I swear, it's been going on forever. It's taken so long. It's over. Okay, fine. No wonder. I was about to say, it had to have been gone eventually. So, there's another game left to play against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. We've conceded an away goal, but we got one back, so there's a positive. Oh, boy. All right. So, if we want to get into the final, we have to beat Chelsea. So, we drew 1-1 against Chelsea. That's a... That's not a bad result playing a legendary with the team that we have, but either way, it still means that we need to beat Chelsea at Stamford Bridge if we want to get into the final of the Capital One Cup. Either that or we score two away goals and at least draw, so it'll be tough. But either way, FIFA 14's player ratings, Kyle Reid got man of the match in that game, so yes, but my votes. I gave one vote to uh, McLean in that game, I'm giving two votes to Jamison, and three votes are going to go to Reads. Yes, both joint man of the matches. Advancing on through to this game that I, I won't play in this episode. I'll wait for the next episode. But we're hearing back. Danny Pacheco said no, which is annoying. So we're going to have to try to bump that up as well. He is a top player at the club. Feels it move. Doesn't suit me. We need to pay him more money then. Let's see what 25000 does for you. And you know what? I might even chuck on the important first team player role. Hopefully he'll accept that. I don't want to put Crucial on if I don't have to. So... But I'll definitely be playing him if I get him. So, important first team player. But we have this game against Old Am in the next episode. We'll hear back from, uh, of course, Danny Pacheco. We'll try to sign more players. And yes. But until then, guys, I'm yours, Game of the Masterbox. Thank you for watching the return episode of Bradford City. It is finally back. Can we maybe even get 2,000 likes for its return? And yes, thank you for watching. Peace out, guys. And I'll catch you later. Bye bye.